Tonight, one army base is taking extraordinary steps to try and stop it. That's just one of the stories we're talking about tonight with CNN anchor and correspondent Erica Hill, national political correspondent Jessica Yellen, Lisa Bloom, in session anchor and CNN legal analyst, and Steve Kornacki, columnist for the New York Observer. Well, we begin with the, six, with the suicides haunting Fort Campbell, the army base near Paducah, Kentucky. It's not the only place where troops are killing themselves, but the numbers at Fort Campbell alone led commanders to order a stand down, shutting down operations for three days beginning today. Pentagon correspondent Chris Lawrence is at Fort Campbell tonight. Chris, tell us exactly why do they think this is going to help? Well, Rolla, it's designed to just clear the table and focus everyone just on preventing suicides. That's why every soldier here has now been assigned a battle buddy to look out for each other. And you know, so far this year, a Fort Campbell soldier is nearly three times more likely to kill himself than die in battle. Think about that. Three soldiers from here were killed in Afghanistan, 11 committed suicide. Chris, is there any... Suicide on Fort Campbell's bad, and it's got to stop now. No matter how tough your problems look right now, they'll be better tomorrow. Believe it. Trust me. You don't have to believe it. Just trust me. They'll be better tomorrow. Don't take away your tomorrow. And again, it's not just one base. Uh, there are 64 potential suicides in the Army this year. The Marines had 41 last year. Roland? Chris, is there any one reason they can point to as to why these soldiers are killing themselves? It's tough, but about 70% of the suicides last year listed relationship problems as at least part of the answer. Now, the Pentagon is trying to get a lot of these soldiers more time at home, but it cannot and will not happen for at least 18 months when we're completely out of Iraq. And some officials have told us privately they're literally holding their breath until that happens. Chris Longs, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Folks, Iraq veteran Paul Rykoff created the first and largest organization devoted to vets of both Iraq and Afghanistan. He's also the author of the book Chasing Ghosts. Paul, certainly welcome back to the program. Now, this stand down, Paul, do you think it's actually going to help? Yes, absolutely. I think the 101st Airborne has always sh shown leadership. They showed leadership in World War II and every major conflict, and they're showing leadership here again. This is a matter of life and death. Taking these folks off the line, giving them mandatory suicide prevention counseling, family counseling will help. It'll definitely save lives, and we need it right now. Fort Campbell, up until March, was losing one soldier a week to suicide. So this is definitely an urgent issue they've got to take head on. You mentioned March because that was when they, they actually put into place a prevention campaign. But, but one thing I think we need to take into account, Brigadier General Townsend had said, look, treat any mental issue you may have, any concern, just the way you would a physical injury on the battlefield. But there is still such a stigma, Paul, when it comes to seeking help and some concern that it may show weakness, especially as you further your career in the military. How do you overcome that? Just like this. You take it on as a leadership issue. You have leaders out in front saying, I've gotten help. It's just like a gunshot wound, so other kind of physical injury. You take it head on. It is treatable. Suicide is entirely preventable. This isn't traumatic brain injury or another type of physical wound. We can get ahead of the curve here, get screening, get counselors in place, get the families involved, and save lives. We hear about soldiers taking so many multiple tours of duty. But is there something about fighting an insurgency also that adds to the psychological stress? Sure, these folks are under tremendous stress. They don't know where the enemy's coming from. They don't know what type of weapon they're going to use. And every brigade at Fort Campbell has been deployed three times at this point. Wow. So these folks are going over and over again. We've got to give them rest. We've got to give them treatment. And we've got to give their families support, too. That's a critical part of a comprehensive solution. But well, isn't that really the bottom line problem is this redeployment? Can you stop the suicides without stopping this many? Three redeployments for some of these folks facing a fort. You can definitely reduce the number. If we do mandatory mental health screening across the board, you can catch folks who have problems before they go. We can get uh, psychological trauma counselors in the field, on the front lines when folks are wounded or killed. And we can get them adequate support throughout the entire redeployment process. It's not happening at the higher levels enough right now. We need the president involved. And we can really get ahead of the curve on this. But, but Paul, we heard uh, Chris in that, in that piece there talking about you know, the idea of we have the drawdown in Iraq coming. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to get some relief maybe because these troops can come home and finally you know, catch their breath. In theory, that sounds great. But we're also talking about ramping up and having basically a surge in Afghanistan now. We're sending you know, thousands of new troops over there. A lot of them presumably are going to come from Iraq, going from one, you know, one boiler plate to the next. I mean, is this trend really going to slow down much until we're completely out of Iraq and Afghanistan? We don't know, but we can definitely eliminate some of the risk factors. Grow the size of the military overnight and reduce deployments. We're not going to pull everybody home from Iraq immediately, but we can get them the care that they need. We can get leadership involved. We need the president talking about these issues. Admiral Mullen has been showing leadership here, Secretary Gates. They can send the right message and let these soldiers know that coming forward is a sign of strength. 
It will make your unit stronger, not a sign of weakness. Paul, how do you, though, get a soldier uh, to recognize the condition of his fellow soldier? Because at the end of the day, those two are by each other side by side. And so how do you convince one person to say, you need to, you need to tell somebody about, you, about your partner? Well, it's already part of the culture. You have a buddy system in place. You've got a battle buddy when you go through basic training. If your battle buddy's struggling, you're supposed to take care of him. He's having a tough issue. You work with him. But, and, but, and but they're not struggling, though. I mean, what, I mean, I understand in the yeah. battlefield, but what you tell them, guys, his is struggling as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to know the warning signs. you got to know if somebody's having an alcohol or drug problem, if they're having family issues, if, if they've talked about feeling uh, disconnected from the rest of the unit. Those are the warning signs. And you have an obligation to take care of them just as though they sprained their ankle or got shot in the battlefield. I was just saying, well, one last quick point, though. I just want to go back to the Sipian for a second. Do you think that uh, the Army, that, in fact, all branches of the military, are, are adequately trying to also treat the stigma, not just the problem? They can definitely do more, and they're behind the curve here. I mean, we're, we're into multiple deployments. Uh, Admiral Mo and other folks are catching up for years, I think, of a lack of focus. So they've got a lot of great ground to make up. But the stigma is a cultural issue, big bureaucracy. It's going to take time, and it's going to take leadership. Paul Rykoff, author of Chasing Ghosts, thanks for coming by and also for your leadership. We appreciate Anytime. it. Thank you, folks. Folks, barely.